Hi, today I would like to share with you the three AI that I like to use in my day-to-day -day practice as an internal medicine doctor. So let's get started. So the first AI, of course, is going to be ChatGPT, right? So right now we have a three versions of ChatGPT 3.5, 4, and 4.0. I started with the ChatGPT 4 because it's clearly better than the ChatGPT 3.5. But after the ChatGPT 4.0 comes out, it's kind of interchangeable. Sometimes I use ChatGPT 4, sometimes 4.0. I don't really feel the difference difference on my day-to-day -day practice so yeah I use that interchangeably now what do I use ChatGPT for for <laughs> uh, during my day-to-day -day practice usually I use it to help me with differential diagnosis so sometimes I feel stuck if there is a patient symptoms I can't really figure out what else is possible in this patient I have a ChatGPT for to help me add some ideas of what other differential diagnosis that are possible I also ask ChatGPT if there is any additional history of physical exam or or labs or any diagnostic test that I should do for the patient. It's kind of like give me the idea, it's like an assistance and extra brain for me to give me some additional ideas. In addition to that, I also like to use ChatGPT4 to help me explain pathophysiology or pathogenesis or some form of a mechanism that maybe I forgot or I like to learn something new. ChatGPT4 is really good at explaining those things. One thing that I used to like to do but now I stopped doing it is asking for treatment or management. <laughs> ChatGPT4 is really poor at providing treatment or management because it always end with you have to consult your healthcare provider or you have to consult the specialist you know so it's not really helpful at all so I kind of stop asking what would be the management for this patient I would rather have ChatGPT provide me with some ideas of the differential diagnosis and workup so I can figure out what's the best treatment for the patient the next AI that I like to use pretty much every day is the ambient technology or you can call it the AI scribe or a scriber which is but it's a artificial intelligence so what it does is that it will listen to conversation between the provider me and the patient and then after we're done I just need to click one button which is create the notes in one to two minutes then it will create the notes for me so I don't have to write notes what I need to do is just copy paste the notes which is very amazing I've been using this for like a couple months now and unfortunately I cannot share with you the exact name of the application my employer won't allow it to do so because it's still in the initial development for the app and I just happen to be one of the some people I think there are like 70 or 80 providers that are currently using this technology and I just happen to be one of them when they come out I'm very excited because I've been using ChatGPT4 so I'm really excited to be part of the initial development of this app and it was really amazing and I've been very very happy I've been using it pretty much every day although after a couple of months using it I found some disadvantage of this AI ambient technology I would like to save that for the next video because it might be quite lengthy you want to stay tuned and then check that out now the last AI that I like to use on my day-to-day -day practice is open evidence AI now I think this AI needs to be used by pretty much all providers <laughs> the reason is because it's so good since I use open evidence AI I rarely open up to date I mean I used to use up to date almost every day if not every couple of days so open evidence AI is the AI that's developed by the Mayo Clinic group so what it does is it aggregate and synthesize all the information from high reputable journal in the whole world like NAGM, Lancet, Grace Anatomy, all of them. There were like 2,000 plus highly reputable journals in the open evidence AI. So you just have to ask a question and then it will give you the recommendations based on the evidence. It's the evidence-based medicine. So I did mention that I didn't use a chat GPT for anymore for treatment because now I have open evidence AI. Open evidence AI can give you recommendations on treatment based on the questions that you ask. For example, like last week, I believe I have a patient with stroke in the cerebral area and the cerebral edema. Try to think which one is better to reduce the intracranial pressure. Is it the mannitol or hypertonic saline? And then you can ask that in the open evidence AI and then it will get all the information for all reputable journals and give you the answer and the answer was hypertonic saline is better than mannitol so that's just one example there are many more examples that you can use with the open evidence AI and on top of that it's free if you're a medical provider you have an NPI number then it's going to be free for you unlike ChatGPT4 where you have to pay $20 per month so I highly recommend if you're medical providers to use open evidence AI it's interesting that uh, 
uh, there has not been a lot of providers that know or use it so that's the reason why I make this video now that's pretty much it I'm pretty sure there are more AIs out there so those are the three AIs that I use in my day-to-day -day practice please share down below if you use different AI what AI that you use in your day-to-day -day practice and again I'm an internal medicine doctor you probably are different doctors I would say most likely there will be some other AIs that being used in your practice that I will probably never heard of and I would really interested to know and we all would like to know and before I forget if you're a student and you're going for rotations or whatever specialty you're going to go combinations of open evidence AI chat GPT4 really make your learning experience very very effective because old ways going to be find a books read a books and then find the information there now it's easier with Google they said it's easier with YouTube they said but you still have to search it's easier with the app to date you can search but now it's even way more easier because you can just ask directly questions to either chat gpt4 or open evidence to get information and to understand even some mechanism pathophysiology etc because you can just keep asking questions to chat gpt4 can you explain with me a simple terms can you give me an analogy can you you know you just keep going like that and then it really saves time on learning it becomes very very effective so i'm really excited in the future i think the ai really will improve the quality of the doctors and improve the quality of the care that you can give for your patients that's it the video for today i'll see you again in the next video